welcome to Monster Truck Gallery in Temple Bar for the opening of Life Vividly Lived Part 2. Back in September, seven artists got together and went to Inish Turkbeg just off the coast of Mayo, Clue Bay, for seven glorious days. And this showcases the work they did. We have the exhibition because it is such an intoxicating place that inspires people to do different things and when you have the talent of an artist, trying to get those two things to collide, you know, the bare talent of the artist and the inspiration of the place. We don't know what will come of it, but the, the common theme, I suppose, is that the island will be seen secretly and silently in, in the work because it's inspiring, it, it's, it's the locomotive force behind it all. My point of view as director of the Royal Brain Academy, I'm exposed to a lot of artists, um, but I was also very conscious that we're going to have to involve a generation of artists that I didn't know anything of, very young artists, so that's why I invited Peter Prendergast of Monsertuk to join with me to co-curate this exhibition. So we have the work of seven artists. We have a combination uh, of artists from the RHA, the Royal Brain Academy, and Monsertuk Gallery, and an invited artist who has worked with the island uh, in previous years called uh, Shoei. I'm a recycle artist. I use everything, the, something I found, abandoned things or things people not care anymore kind of things. Then I found these old things. Uh, just the next island from the Inishtak bag. So I asked the person who owned the island and then he said, take it. So I use it. When I'd heard about Inishtak bag and looked at it, online and saw the top of the island, I got this sense that I could possibly make a 360 degree view of Clue Bay and after that it was a question of trying to work out how I might do that and how I could establish a studio. In the meantime I worked on another piece down in the shelter of uh, the grove, at the, at the old pier, the trees there which is a fantastic spot on the island. It's the oldest bit of human habitation on the island. That's where I started work and did a piece there which I'm really happy with. But the bug of wanting 360 degrees couldn't leave me. So I just had an idea of a sheep trailer. I could put all the work in there and it was perfect. So I, somehow in two days I managed to do the 360 degrees of Clue Bay. Living in Dublin, you don't get that much alone time walking. So whenever you're walking, there's people, noises, things to look at. And there is much more peaceful, it's a different pace, the things you're looking at are incredibly beautiful. And it's an island amongst so many other islands, you feel like that's one singular within the many. And so I had that singular many thing going on. Um, and then also to be chosen to be part of the residency, I felt, you know, I was one of very few and that came down from another process. So there's some sort of reflections that came out. Yeah, for the piece. I suppose what really struck me on the island was that we could be on the island and be so connected to the larger world. So I suppose the work is kind of inspired by um, a tension between these two massive realities, like the, the vast natural landscape and this, this new sort of um, mammoth reality of of internet technology and global communication. In the morning I'd spend just walking around the island, kind of taking photographs, doing rough sketches outside, kind of working plan air. The afternoon I'd bring everything back to the studio and start working on kind of my finished pieces. It was kind of broken up by the meals and the interaction with the other artists during the day, which was a really nice part of it as well. It was kind of nice to bounce off the other artists and, and maybe you'd go walking around the island with the other artists and talking about it. And it just kind of opened up everybody's mind, I think, because all the artists were working in such different fields and in such different styles. So you kind of got a broader outlook of how you can look at the island and how you see it for yourself. We, we did this incredible boat journey around this gorgeous long island. It's a really beautiful ridge. It's almost like a mini Ben Bulbin, if you can imagine that, just sticking out of the sea. And uh, we went right around it in the boat, and I took pictures and remembered it. And I thought, mm, I'd like to make that. I can, I see, as a sculptor, I see landscape as a potential sculpture that I could make, you know, and I'm always trying to interfere with the land. That's what I do. I, I try and think big about land, which is very hard to do. So 
eventually this between the photographs, my memory and books, I came up with this shape. With a photographer you're always struggling against like what is the difference between your landscape art and, and the postcard. Within the work you'll see that in all times the, 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 the beautiful vista that, that extends westward is on my back. It's a little sort of a joke about trying to say I'm not actually going to photograph this, I've got to actually turn my, my gaze, my, my look, in on the island itself. And so that's what the rest of the pictures try to actually do. They try to look at maybe very small parts of the island, sort of quotidian day-to-day -day parts that might be overlooked normally. It's all well and good chatting to the artists about their own work, but as evening descends and the private view gets into full swing, it's time to see what the public think. It's, it's a really fascinating exhibition. I've never seen this kind of group of artists together. Ruth Lyons' piece, I just absolutely love. But yeah, it's really good fun. It's really nice to see a combination of completely different works, everything from sculpture to painting to drawing, um, and that's kind of what I enjoy most about it. And it's a difficult space to work with, so I think having them all work so well is they've done really well to make it all happen. Having been in there and spoken to people, I can say for sure it's been a huge success, and not just because I've had some Inish Turkbeg whiskey.